Hello everyone and welcome to Adam Sharp YouTube channel and we're going to continue working on our Reminders clone with the Swift Data Framework. So let's go ahead and continue. So in the last video, what we did is we set up kind of like our very basic interface. As you can see on the right hand side, we have my list screen, which has some hard coded reminders or list. And I can go ahead and pull up this nice page, which is add new list. It doesn't really add anything right now. It has selector view, which is a color selector and all that. So it looks really nice, but it doesn't really do much. It doesn't save to the database. So that's what we have to figure out that how can we save information using Swift data to an actual database. In order to do that, the first thing we need to do is to start thinking about what models we're gonna be creating. So I'm gonna create a new model and we need to create models because these things will be the one that will actually persist to the database. And I'm gonna call it my list. I can't really call it list, even though I want to, because there's already something called list available in Swift UI. So I'm just gonna call it my list. And this is going to be the model that is used by Swift data. So I'm gonna first import Swift data, all right? And I'll create a class called my list and put the model macro on there, which is only available on the class. So if you try to put the model macro on a struct, it's not really going to work. I'm also going to go ahead and add the model as can have a name, like a list can have a name like groceries and some sort of a color associated with it, right? Now, in the previous version of Xcode, I was able to use transformable types, uh, which actually saves the type in the database, which was pretty cool. Unfortunately, right now it's not really working out. So instead of saving a transformable type, I'm just gonna save the color code, the hex code for that color, all right? And eventually I think when Apple fixes those problems, then I'll update the video with another one where we actually use the transformable types. Let's go ahead and create a constructor for it or initializer. There we go, great. So now we have a my list. It has a name, it has color code. Now in order to be working with our application, it would be a good idea for us to invest some time in previews or the fake container which is only available on the previews, all right? So right now, if I see over here, my list screen, I can go ahead and provide a model container over here. And the model container is required if you're using Swift data. But what I want to do is I want to provide it a model container which already has some list added to it, like reminders, groceries, entertainment. So let's go ahead and first import Swift data with, over here. Okay, and how do I provide some sort of a pre preview container? Well, what I'm going to do is I'm gonna add a new file in the preview content, and I'm gonna call this preview container, and this will only be available to the previews. And the only point of adding the preview container is so that when we're working with previews, it can provide some dummy data to it. So I'm just gonna say Swift data, var preview container, which is going to be returning a model container. And everything inside that will be on the main actor or else we won't be able to access the context. We're gonna create the container, which will be try model container. And for configuration, we're gonna pass in over here the model type we just created. We only have one model type right now, so we're just gonna pass in my list dot self and the configuration you can see that we can pass in that if the data is stored in memory or not and i'm going to pass in true because i'm working with previews and i don't really want to persist data to the database uh, if it can just persist with the in-memory representation that is also fine and then just go ahead and return container all right now you can see over here i'm using the force try exclamation mark, not a big problem over here because the preview container will only be used for the previews. So if there is some problem setting up the model container, your previews will actually crash. 
Now let's go ahead and get some sample data. There we go. You can see that I've created a separate struct called sample data. It has a static property called my list, and it returns you an array of two hard-coded lists. One is reminders, and the other one is backlog. But we still need to go through this list and add that list item into the database. So I'm just going to go ahead and say sample data dot my list, and then using the container dot main context dot insert. I will insert the my list. So this means that if I try to use preview container, I should automatically get these two lists because I'm inserting it. Now we can go back to the my list screen. And for the previews, we should be able to set over here model container. And I can pass in the preview container. Now the preview container is marked with main actor. So it's only available on the main actor. So in the preview, we can also say main actor. And so that the preview will also work on the main actor. So let's go ahead and make sure that we're using that. There we go. Now we know that when we are providing the preview container to our application, that preview container also contains two items. Remember we, when we had these items, this one and this one? And we're also inserting the items in the container. That is the preview container. So this means that I can go ahead and try to fetch those items and then display it instead of this hard-coded my list array. So let's see. So I can say query my list, which is going to be my list. We can remove that part. And if I want to display my list, I don't really need an ID over here because my list already has an ID automatically created. So it's already identifiable. And my list is now a class, but that has a property called name. So we can do that. We can use one of the name properties and it's going to display those items. And there we go. You can see that these two items are now coming from our preview container. So that's pretty cool, all right? The next thing that we want to do is to actually add the my list to the screen or add the my list to the database. So over here, you can see that in the done function, we're not really doing anything. So let's go ahead and do something over here. Well, if you look over here, if I create a my list instance, my list, we need a name and we need a color code. Name is easy because name is coming from the text box, which we can simply access by list name. But the color code, hmm, well, color code is going to come from this color. And there's no way for us to, by default, say that this color, which is of type color, give us a color code. So we need to do something about that. The other thing we need to do is to also inject over here the model container for our preview container. So let's go ahead and say preview container, which is only available on the main actor. So we will have to use the main actor over here, main actor. Okay. So now the problem is that we have the selected color, but this is in a color. So if I go and jump over here into the color, you can see that this is a struct, which is conforming to hashable, custom, string convertible, sendable, but it's a struct. It's we need to convert this color somehow to a hex code. So how can we do that? Well, I was able to ask ChatGPT to come up with some code that will allow us to convert a color into hex. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and add a new group over here. I'll say extensions, new file, and this will be an extension on color itself. So color plus extensions. And I can add an extension to the color, but before that I'll import Swift UI because that's where the color lives, I believe. So I'll say extension, color. And now I can implement that two hex function. The two hex function will be responsible for taking the color and then converting the color into hex. So let's use that. Now, if you want a little bit more detailed about this function, you can definitely paste this code in uh, ChatGPT and, and find out more about it. 
all right? It's basically extracting the RGBs and then it's forming that particular hex string. But let's go over here back and try to see if we can get the hex, all right? So over here, I'm gonna say hex code or just hex, I guess we can say hex probably and color dot two hex. And this is going to return us the string optional. So we're gonna unwrap it. And now I should be able to pass in hex, all right? And finally, I should be able to say con context, which we don't have access to. So let's go on the top and get access to the context, which will be the model context private var context. Go back over here and say context.insert my list. And then after the insertion, we can go ahead and dismiss it. All right. All right. So let's go back to the my list screen and try to add a new list. So we have backlog, we have reminders. Let's go ahead and add something, let's say groceries. So groceries, green color, and let's say done. Okay, groceries is added, but one thing to see over here is that this is not really green color, all right? This is black. So we need to fix that also. So how do we fix this part? Well, the problem is that when we are displaying these items, you can see right here, we're not really telling image that the foreground style will be coming from mylist.color, right? I mean, there is something called mylist.color, right? Mylist.color code. There is something like that. So this means that we have a color code and we need to convert it now to an actual color. And for that, let me actually show you, I got that part of code from this block from Marco Edinger. And it's basically a really nice post about from hex to color and back in Swift UI. So he has provided the code. I'll add the link to, the, to this article. It's a really good article. You should definitely read it. And we can use that code to convert the color, which is in hex, back to the actual color. So that is pretty cool because that's exactly what we want to do. Let's go back to our color extensions. And over here, we can add that, all right? There we go. So we can add that. This means that if you pass in the hex string over here, it's going to initialize a new color. Let's go back and maybe we can do it over here. We can say foreground style. And over here, we can say color. Should be a one with the hex probably, hex my list dot color code. So we pass in the color code and then it gives you the color. And you can already see it's working, right? Because the backlog over here is purple and this is green, but let's go ahead and add another one. So let's call it entertainment and let's add that. And now you see red color. So it looks like this is all working and all of these things are actually now saving to the database. And by database, I mean the in-memory database, but if you run it on an actual device, it will save it to the actual device, but don't run it, run it right now because we haven't done uh, figuring out the reminders clone app. So let's go to the clone app, which is your app file. Uh, instead of using content view, actually we can delete content view. We're not really going to use content view. Let's go ahead and delete it. There we go. And over here, our home screen is called my list screen. And we're also using the navigation stack, right? Okay, and we will be using the model container. Well, not really model container per se. We're not gonna use the preview container because that's the real deal. This is the actual app. We're just gonna say my list.self. And I think that hopefully should be enough to run it on an actual device. So let me go ahead and run it. And when this persists the information, it will be persisted to the actual database. So let me go ahead and say reminders. Okay, there we go. Let me go ahead and say over here, groceries. Okay, we have the groceries. And let me go ahead and stop this and try to run it again and reminders groceries. So we got the both of them, all right? 
So this means that they are being persisted to the actual database. So there you have it. Um, in this video, you learn how to save it to an actual database using Swift data. And you also learn how to display it on the screen. So hope you have enjoyed it. And in the next video, we'll be obviously be moving forward with the Reminders Clone app. If you like this video and want to support my channel, then the best way would be to check out my website, adamsharp.school. This is one of the largest catalogs for iOS development. And you can see that I have one of the greatest videos that are available on iOS development, uh, videos on MVVM in Swift UI. You have MV Pattern, Core Data Bootcamp, Full Stack iOS Development. Nobody is even talking about Full Stack iOS Development. I have a course on it. Then we have a reactive programming using Combine. And you can see that I have a lot of other courses, Testament Development, Reality Kit, if you're trying to do any Vision Pro, uh, then that's a prerequisite. You should learn Reality Kit too. Apart from that, I also have workshops. Now, these are live workshops. They're like three hours long. And the next workshop is coming up on April 27th. And this is actually the last time that I'm going to be offering the workshop at pretty much like a free price of $50 only because Swift Data Fundamentals and all the other workshops, they will be different pricing. You can see the price is going up, all right? The best way to get these courses, you can buy them individually or you can simply go ahead and sign up for the membership. Uh, the yearly plan is the most popular plan and you get 22 courses, 130 hours of content, 50% on workshop and also monthly Q&A which means that we will have pro members will have a Q&A meeting all over Zoom for one hour a month. And you can just join the meeting. You can ask questions, maybe career advice. And, you know, I'll try my best to answer all of those questions that you have or just to chit chat. That is perfectly fine too. So there you have it. AlamSharp.school, your number one source for iOS development. Thank you.